Hello again, everybody. This is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout, and thank you for tuning in to this installment of the Autism Hangout feature program series, Ask Dr. Tony, where everybody's favorite expert on autism and Asperger's, Dr. Tony Atwood, addresses your questions. Well, it's nice to see you again, Dr. Tony. It's been a long time. How are you doing? People may be worried about how have I been after the cycling accident and the neurosurgeon. The good news is I've not lost any skill. Well, it's just so nice to have you back here. In fact, so many people missed you. We have queued up like 50 questions, and in order to be able to address this in a timely manner, we had to winnow it down to 14. But I can tell people that we have selected issues that have broad appeal. So we're trying to get a lot of different subjects covered in this short period of time. So are you ready to go? Yep, I'm ready to go. Let's hope we don't have any breakages on the way. Yeah, Skype is playing some games here, but let's see if we can make it through. Okay, the first question. The first question is a two-parter. I've met many transsexuals who are also autistic, especially female to male. Why is that? And then the second part, can my autism symptoms change through my second puberty, meaning probably after their operation? This is from Ginger Audie at YouTube. What an interesting question. And yes, I have met a number of people who have changed gender and have an autism spectrum disorder. I think there are two components here. One is neurological and the other is psychological. There is a suggestion that many of them have Asperger's syndrome seem to be more inclined to be with boys, be a tomboy as a child, um, like boys' toys, and think that I get their jokes, I enjoy being with the boys, um, I'm also interested in mathematics and engineering, and I don't like fashion, and all those sorts of things. And so there can be what we call the male brain, in a neurological sense, that the person really does feel an affinity to, and may decide to do that through through surgery, rather drastic, but it, it can be done. The other is psychological, and that is basically saying, I don't like who I am, and if I change gender, will I change my personality and possibly cure myself of Asperger's syndrome? For example, some of the boys will say, well, the boys bully and tease me, but the girls are nice and kind, and they got lots of friends, and girls are good to me, and if I became a girl, then maybe I would have the kindness that they have, and so what may occur psychologically is I don't like who I am and I want to change gender. Now, I tend to find that when those have had the uh, gender reassignment surgery, that it hasn't changed their ASD characteristics. They are still the same. Physiologically, they may have changed gender, but the issues of understanding facial expressions, reading body language, and all those sorts of things of making friends still remain. So it may help in some ways. The next question, I have high functioning autism and my partner has been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. My partner and I have tried to have a healthy sex life, but there are some critical barriers. She wants to have sex occasionally, frequently. Though she knows how to initiate sex, she just can't bring herself to do it. She labels it as, I can't do it, or I just don't know how. She has asked me to be more forward with my sexual advances, so it's easier for her to go along with. I find it hard to make clear what I want, so I do what I feel are sleazy advances. I'm quite embarrassed about it. Are there strategies that we can put in place that will help? And this is anonymous from YouTube. Okay, when we look at dating, romance, and intimacy, mm -hmm. it's reading the most subtle and deepest of thoughts and feelings, and that can be very difficult for those with Asperger's syndrome. Mm -hmm. Now, there can be what we call performance anxiety. That is, not knowing whether I will do well, whether I will read the signals, whether my performance is going to be good. This is for both males and females. And that anxiety can lead to, I might make a mistake, that performance anxiety. Now, the important thing here is, first of all, anxiety and sex really don't tend to go together. Um, but I do strongly recommend that, that this couple go to a relationship counsellor that focuses on aspects of intimacy. Um, one of the difficulties in this situation is that both partners have Asperger's syndrome, but by definition, both will have difficulties in communication, communicating in that area, we 
which will complicate matters. And so I think they need a third party, a relationship counsellor, who can work on this. Now, one of the things is uh, making sleazy advances. Um, that may be a sort of description of how the person again feels. It's being open and honest about the situation and not being anxious with the one party or embarrassed by the other party. What they need is knowledge and knowledge from someone who's an expert in this area. There are books specifically written for those with Asperger's on this topic, but I quite understand the difficulties but suggest that you need help. Mm -hmm. Very good. Next question. I am an adult who was recently diagnosed with AS, and I'm having difficulty identifying and expressing my emotions. When I was a child, I reacted to negative emotions by screaming and kicking and throwing things, and I usually felt much better shortly afterward. But as an adult, I know that kind of behavior is inappropriate. The trouble is I haven't learned another effective way to express emotions. Instead, they build up and they cause a lot of stress and anxiety. Recently, I've been dealing with a lot of stress at work, and my urge to, for lack of a better term, throw a tantrum is ever increasing. I'm even having dreams at night in which I try to scream, but I have no voice. Can you suggest any strategies for dealing with and expressing such complex negative emotions that work well for people with Asperger's? This is from Carolyn Marie at Autism Hangout. Okay, first of all, um, don't inhibit it. Go with it. <laughs> Just make sure it's not in public or within the family. Um, it's what I call cleansing the system. It's rebooting the emotion computer. And it's a quick fix. It gets it out of your system and it's very healthy. The problem is other people can be confused by it or scared by it. So it needs to be done in private. We would also do a little bit of what we call creative destruction. That is, you have a box of things that you can smash, crush, that are for recycling. And once you crush those cans and that packaging of white goods and really get it out of your system, it's better than Prozac, and it's quick. So, in other words, don't get upset by it or embarrassed. Throw a tantrum in private, because it will work wonders. But just make sure that other people know what you're doing. And if they hear you screaming and shouting and crushing things, to know that it's okay. Yeah. Now, the difficulty is you can't really do that at work unless you go to the toilet, close the cubicle door, and then silently go through your rage with gestures and thoughts, and then get it out of your system, open the cubicle door with a smile on your face, and just flush the toilet. <laughs> so, in a way, what you're doing is you're flushing all the anguish yes. down the toilet. Yeah, excellent. 